Tracy M. Welcome to Get Gutsy. Thanks, Jenny. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, and we have our twin necklaces on today, not even planned. <laughs> yes, yes. From a very, very special retreat you led in Tulum, Mexico. Yes, yes. So for those of you watching video of this conversation today, Tracy and I have these incredible freaking necklaces. And when I wear this, and I'm sure for you too, Tracy, it like brings you back. It's it like brings you back. And that's the, the cool thing about, about jewelry. There are these power pieces that remind you of a place that you visited or this, this moment where you said, I'm getting that for myself, or maybe it's a gift from somebody else. And that's, that's a fun part of being a woman. It's not like men can't wear jewelry too, but it's one of my favorite parts of um, getting dressed. It's like, oh, what, what do I want to put on today to kind of bring me forward throughout my day? All right, Tracy, so you and I go way back. Why don't you tell everyone tuning in, how did we even meet? How did this happen? Yeah, so it's kind of an interesting story. Um, I um, got an email from my good friend Angelique Brewers that she had a client who was um, in a competition, and it was you. And Angelique was trying to drum up votes for you. And so I love Angelique. I, you know, worked with her for in corporate. And I thought, well, if Angelique likes her, I like her. And so I kind of just checked you out. I liked what you were doing. This is a and I voted for you. And I thought, well, I'm going to get on your, your email list and just kind of stalk you and follow you. So I followed you for quite some time. And I got one of your emails where you were offering the Cash In On Your Calling program um, for, or no, it was actually, I think it was Live Your Dream. Yeah, I think your first program. And yeah. I thought, yeah, I think it was uh, Live Your Dream Challenge. It was like $297. Mm hmm and was like a lot of money to spend on something. And mm -hmm. I thought, what the heck, I'm just going to do this. It looks interesting. And you know, the rest is history. Mm -hmm. That really um, sparked something inside of me and connected me to you and your work. At, you know, here we are fast forward years later. And I think of all the programs I've done with you and all the private coaching I've done and mm -hmm. all the retreats I've been on. Mm -hmm. Now, it really was a pivot point for me because at that point in my life, um, my professional life, I was really sure I want to be when I grow up and mm -hmm. what do I want to leave as a legacy in the world? And I just, you know, I was sitting in a cube. I had a great job. I was working for a global company and I was the, the global communications manager. I was doing mergers and acquisitions in countries around the world, like on paper, but it wasn't really fueling my soul. And um, so that was really the, the, the start mm -hmm. of investing in myself, seeking coaches and mentors that had done things that I wanted to do. And so I'm so mm -hmm. weak for just really promoting you and leading me to you because I really probably would have never found you, you know, for that. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for reminding me of that. Yeah. It, and it's, it's, you know, as you share that story, go, okay, there are a couple things that I'm picking up on. One, the power of working with coaches. Uh, not only was I working with Angelique at that time, but Allie Brown, who was the, the leading up that contest that I, you know, signed up for, I was in her big program. And that's how Angelique and I first met was, was through Allie Brown. So this, this idea that, as women, we, we can't do this alone. And, you know, we may have received messages growing up that you couldn't really trust other women, that we were, you know, we couldn't support one another because we felt like there wasn't a lot of seats at the table. And so we, we felt like, well, she takes that piece of pie. There's nothing left for me. And what I learned as I got into this entrepreneurship world and kind of online coaching and, and all of that was, I'm meeting some incredible women who are totally wanting me to succeed and I want them to succeed. And we all do it in our own unique way. We're not stepping on each other's toes. Like we're all, there's a room for all of us to be ourselves and to thrive. And then, yeah, look what happened. It's like, 
I met Angelique at Allie's event. Angelique and, and I started working together because I noticed, as, as you knew about her, that she's so freaking smart and she was going to help me really develop what that business was going to look like and the programs and the offers and all that kind of thing. And then she helped me out by reaching out to her community and saying, hey, vote for this amazing gal, Jenny, for this contest. And thank you for your vote because I ended up winning silver prize in that contest and uh, an Apple computer. <laughs> and I, I'm actually going to pick it up from the like, the shop, the Apple shop, because it needed some more memory put into that machine. But yeah, what a wild ride. What a wild ride. So as you mentioned, your background is in communications and you've done really well in that field. It's definitely one of your gifts is communicating and understanding what's happening and how it to break that down in a way that that satisfies the different audiences and, and all of that kind of thing. Um, tell us more about kind of what you said that that itch or that feeling of this is great you know I'm here I'm at this big company I'm good at my job but something doesn't feel exactly right tell us more about that feeling and and how you navigated that because a lot of our listeners are in that now or mm -hmm. can totally relate because they have been in that yeah. So, you know, I've spent decades um, being a corporate gal. Um, I've checked all the boxes. I've gone from an entry level position to the C-suite very rapidly and at a very young age in very male dominated world. And so I kind of want to go back to your point about mm -hmm. my experience working with other women was not very positive. Mm -hmm. Um, the women that I thought would be reaching behind and pulling me forward, they mm -hmm. didn't, they tried mm -hmm. every which way to keep me small. And I really didn't want the generation that came behind me to have that experience because it wasn't fun. And I get mm -hmm. that many of them were, you know, trying to shatter the glass ceiling and they were trying to claw and reach and stay there. But I truly believe like you do and like Angelique does. Mm -hmm. The universe is vast, and there is more than enough for all of us to be mm -hmm. um, included. And so I really was also having that experience. Um, so most of my mentors were men. Um, and I, I just, um, what really appealed to me, and I knew nothing about the online marketing world at all. Like that was like a foreign concept to me. Um, and so when I kind of dipped my toe into that world and started being exposed to women who had this different mindset that I had mm -hmm. around helping each other, doing personal growth and development work, um, I thought, I can bring something to the table. Um, and what I really did not know at the time, but I know now, is that one of my gifts is teaching other people. And mm -hmm. what I get really fired up about is teaching other women how to be better leaders. And what I really, really, in my heart of hearts believe is that now more than ever, we need more women leaders in government, in nonprofits, mm -hmm. in corporations, in every single industry and in every single functional area in order for the world to be more inclusive. And who better than to teach than me having had all these vast experiences. I mean, I've done business in 67 countries. That's really That's unusual. Huge. Mm -hmm. That's huge. I've advised CEOs and chairmen of the boards of global organizations around how to get their message out, how to buy and sell companies, how to integrate cultures um, mm -hmm. into new companies. And so I've got all of this experience mm -hmm. that um, other people did not and I thought, I can do something with this outside of, you know, where I am and the money that I'm making. And, you know, I don't want to go to my grave saying I worked a lot of hours in corporate. Mm -hmm. That just wasn't going to be enough for me. And so I had to do something. And while it's taken me a long time to get that clarity around what I just said to you, mm -hmm. I did the work. Mm -hmm. I kept showing up even when it was hard, even when I wanted to quit even when I was tired. And so over time, I have built a community of women through my public speaking, 
-hmm. through my online marketing techniques, through my in-person workshops, through my group programs, mm -hmm. through my books, through my private client work, and now my Brave Girl podcast, right? Mm -hmm. And people say to me all the time, how do you do all that? And I'm like, what you don't understand is that probably six years ago, I had this light bulb moment and I said, I need a roadmap. And it doesn't matter how fast I go, it just matters that I map it out mm -hmm. and I schedule it in because I still wanted to stay in the corporate arena. And so that's what I've done. And a lot of people think it's all or nothing. You have to quit your job, become an entrepreneur overnight. And I'm here to say, no, you don't. You can have a side hustle. You can grow your side hustle over time. And, you know, but you always have to have faith. And that's the thing that has really been my foundation is my faith. And it's in everything that I do, and it's in my belief system. And I, I've spent years getting clear about that because the experiences that I've had, both the highs and the lows, I've learned lessons. Mm -hmm. I've learned lessons that I've, I've been able to impart to my clients. And so that's kind of how I got to where I am from the time I first met you to today. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm just incredibly grateful to my coaches and to my mentors in that online marketing space. Um, and I really feel like the internet has democratized our world, especially for women. Mm -hmm. And I say that all the time, is that you can have the life that you desire because of technology. So don't run away from technology and don't feel like you have to learn it all today. It takes time. It really yeah. does. But you have to have that vision of where you're trying to go and where you're trying to take your people. And so I get so much joy out of seeing the women that I work with as they go on their transformational journey, mm -hmm. just like I went on my transformational journey. Um, you know, you have to do the deep work to heal yourself. Yeah. Because otherwise you stuff things down. You, you have bad eating habits. You... Um, you drink too much, you do drugs, you, you, you overwork. Um, and that's one of the things that you've taught me is the, is the power of self care. Mm -hmm. You have to fuel yourself first. Otherwise you're no good to anybody. But if you don't really get still and quiet, um, and, and have the right mindset, I mean, the highest form of leadership is servant leadership where you serve other people. And your results will show when you have that service mindset. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I get my greatest joy. But I had to go through a process of, of really getting to know who am I, you know, because I was go, 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 like just work, 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 climb, 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 climb. And then I would get sick and burnt out and I'd have to go on medical leave. Mm -hmm. well, that's, that's, that's horrible. I mean, if you don't have your health, you have nothing. You really have nothing. And so I've had to learn really, really hard lessons. Um, but I just, you, you know, the universe is always conspiring for your highest good. And it's when we try and control things that it, that's when it doesn't work. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, our bodies are constantly getting our attention. And so when you were overworking and go, go, go and climb, climb, climb and got to keep going and no time to take a break. And I, I'm gonna, I mean, I, I, I was a corporate girl too. And so you and I had that in common. And I remember being so quote busy, you know, the days are always packed. Eating lunch was like a big thing. <laughs> and yeah. it was very rare yeah. to go out to lunch. I mean, if I went out, it was to get something to then go eat at my desk. You know, I I, I worked in corporate in yeah. New York City, so I I mean, it was really busy. I would just go. We had a um, Oban pan and an Oban pan in our building. You know, it was like so we didn't have to like go outside and get any fresh air. Yep. I'm gonna go down there. I'm gonna get my soup. I'm gonna go right back to my desk because I have a gazillion things to do. And I would shovel that food into my mouth. And that was, I mean, I know people that I worked with who literally, this sounds crazy, would hold their pee because they didn't feel like they had time to go. Right, right. I mean, I've done that myself. I'm like, hold on, I have this thing. And so, you know, it, it's, it's sick. It's like, it's a sickness. 
And I do feel it affects women because we're proving ourselves. Like we, I can do this. I am good enough. I am smart enough. And I am going to show yeah. them that I deserve to be here. And then we make ourselves sick. And so your body's either going to totally freaking crash and burn. And then like you, you had to go on medical leave. Mine, I would have these like panic attacks, breakdowns uh, at work. Literally, I was like, I can't keep this up. I can't keep this up. Where my only way forward was to go to my boss. I remember distinctly going, I, I need a half day. I need a half day off. It was like a big, bold move because I wasn't asking like weeks in advance. It was like, I need that tomorrow. And that was, it felt so, oh my God, like very, I, I felt nervous to say, to say that I needed this. But my body was basically saying, you can't keep this up. You can't keep this up. So for everybody tuning in, if you are burning the candle at both ends, if you think that that is a healthy way to work, it's just not. And it's, it's challenging when you have these you know, significant positions, whether they be in corporate or in a business that you have created. But like you said, Tracy, if you don't have your health, you have nothing. And you can go talk to anybody who's really sick and what they wouldn't give to get that freaking health back. They'd give money back. They'd give the awards back to just get that health back. And so let's talk about what you then have been able to do with this building of, as you call it, a side hustle. And so to your point, yeah, not everyone needs to go quit their job tomorrow to start this business that they're dreaming about. Uh, it, it often just doesn't work that way. That might not be the wisest approach for somebody. And what what tips would you give to someone who's in that position where they need to keep that gig, you know, for whatever reason, and yet they have this call in their soul to go build something like a coaching type business. They have books inside of them. They have a podcast inside of them. They have programs inside of them. They want to lead a workshop. They want to bring a community together because they have so much more to offer than, than just the day job. What tips would you give to someone who's like, okay, that's great, but I'm already freaked stressed out. So how am I going to fit this in? How do I do it? So a couple of things. Um, you have to ask yourself why. Okay, so you've got to know your why, right? For me, I just knew I had more to offer the world than just the organization I was working for. The second thing is you have to have a coach. You have to find somebody that you totally respect that is going to work with you to help you figure it out. And you have to be willing to view it as an investment. And if you don't view it as an investment and you just view it as an expense I can't afford, mm -hmm. well, forget it. Just stay in corporate. If you're not willing to find a, a business coach, strategist that resonates with you um, 100%, then forget it. And I also think that there's tons of really good coaches out there. There's also people who call themselves coaches that really should not be allowed to do that, but it is what it is. And so find someone that has been successful working with other women. If you're a woman, if you're a man, find a man, because I think that matters, um, who can teach you. And that's exactly what I did with you. I mean, I started at 297, but over time, I, I've said no to some of your programs and worked with a different coach because at that point in time, that wasn't the best investment for me or mm -hmm. it was something that I wanted to do different. So not mm -hmm. to say hop around a million coaches, but find that anchor coach who is really going to help you and not judge you for, mm -hmm. you know, the fact that you're not going to, you know, they shouldn't be shaming you into, it's your life, right? And so they right. should be giving you that same space and they should be nurturing you and holding space for you in a way that works. And so yeah. for me, that was what I always appreciated about you is you weren't like, Tracy, you better quit now or what are you doing? I mean, you would push me and you would ask me questions, but mm -hmm. you know, and then the other thing I see people do is they get bright, shiny object uh, syndrome and they're like, I want a podcast. I want a book. I want to speak. Mm -hmm. It's like focus on one thing, focus on mm -hmm. one thing, start to finish, 
test it, view it as an experiment because you can't have all the things all at no. once. No, your time no. is very limited. Your time is very limited. And so the two things that I think are the most important are your calendar and your checkbook. Mm. I think you're managing your finances um, responsibly and you need to be managing your time. I like the way that you said that the calendar and the checkbook. That's really freaking very, that's like so key messagey right there. I'm like, that's so perfect. It's like you just boil it, it down. Is. Uh -huh. It is. And the thing is, you have to look at where you're spending your time, mm -hmm. where you're wasting your time, where things are, you know, sucking the time out of you. I think mm -hmm. it was in Costa Rica on your retreat. Mm -hmm. I, you have us do this calendaring scheduling exercise. Mm -hmm. And I had this aha moment where I was like, I'm in my car mm -hmm. way too much. And that's mm -hmm. when sort of can you telework. And I was like, you know, I can. And so mm -hmm. I was able to reclaim some of my commute time as hours for myself and my business. And then on the checkbook side, what's your money story? Because you have some kind of crazy belief that has been passed down through the generations to you that you're going to be a, ho a homeless person. You're going to be a bag mm -hmm. lady or mm -hmm. all rich people are, are just evil. Mm -hmm. and so you got to get your money story straight. Your money story doesn't have to be what your parents' money story was, but mm -hmm. you got to do some work there and you really got to get it under control. Yes, and absolutely. Study, study with people like Dave Ramsey and Suze Orman and some of these big gurus that teach you money management techniques and, and thoughts. And you got to get your mindset right about money and yeah. what's it what's and, and cash flow and you've got to yes. if you're gonna do it and you're gonna do it you gotta you gotta get your arms wrapped around money yes it's energy it's energy money, yeah yeah and it's because it's it's especially i mean not that money doesn't matter when you work in corporate but when you go out on your own you're gonna or at least add something or side hustles in addition to what you're already doing or if you like eventually take the leap and and just have your business, uh, yeah, the business needs to turn a profit. And, and it might not happen right away. It's like you got to figure stuff out. You need to look at um, like what's selling in your market and you got to find it. It's like this ideal mix and the price point. And, and, it, and it's a process. And that's why for a lot of people, we're figuring it out while they're still employed and getting a paycheck is wise. I mean, even in my business, I wasn't employed full time while I was building my coaching business, but I was doing contract work as a freelancer in the type of work I was doing in corporate before I quit the job. And so that was, that was kind of like that bridge. So it's called like a bridge yeah. job. So I was getting regular money in while I was building my coaching business. I was very straight with the, the company I was consulting for. Like I'm doing this as well. Cause I needed to feel like I could be out in the open and I was doing it, which not everyone has that, 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 that chance to do it. Sometimes people are kind of doing it on the DL, which you know, is a whole nother set of uh, challenges. But yeah, you've got to figure out the money piece. And it, it, and it, unfortunately, I feel like that's where women have been at a disadvantage. And once we realize, oh, this is our responsibility. And, you know, you and I've talked about this, and this is really so much of what I'm talking about in my business now and with my work is financially empowered women are changing the world. We're the ones who are going to do it. As a gender, we give at higher rates than men do across yeah. the board, even though men hold, own much more of the, the world's wealth than women do, like by a freaking landslide. And yet we as a gender give more to these social, um, these causes yeah. that need our support. We help promote social change. We give to organizations who need it. We just have philanthropy and doing good and giving back in our bones in a way that men just, they don't have that, you know, and not to say that some men don't, but they give for different reasons than women do. And so as we look at the problems that are happening in the world and the opportunities that we have, it should light that fire under you as a woman to say, it is my job to get this and that there's people out there who can help me. And it's okay that you don't maybe understand some of the vernacular. There's certain things that I'm like, my eyes glaze over when I look at, you know, I get my investment statements in the mail and I'm like, okay, you know, like, okay, let me, right. okay, great. It's going up. Okay. And if I have questions, I can reach out, 
But, you know, I've invested in getting a financial strategist, you know, a bookkeeper on board, reading, allowing myself to, to get better at this because if you don't, you're always going to struggle and it's just going to feel like, why is it so hard? Why is it so hard? And so you have to be willing to look at your own blind spots. And to your point around focus, no matter if you're, it's a side hustle or it's your main gig, that's something uh, you and I attended a podcast uh, conference years ago. And I know that yeah. helped you get your podcast off the ground. And um, one of the, the guy who got me into podcasting, John Lee Dumas, he uh, has this acronym for focus, which is follow one course until success, follow one course until success. So, you know, what often happens, which you've got to be really disciplined around when you are doing this on the side of a day job that's demanding, right? Uh, is that you just see all the things that are happening and you're like, I want to do all the things, <laughs> you know, I, that looks really <laughs> fun. I want to do this and I want to do that. But as you said, you've got to look how is this going to impact your time? And then what kind of money is coming in the door? There are certain moves right. that are like short-term moves. They kind of give you yeah. hit, you know, wins in the short term, you know, in that short game. And then there's other ones that it's like the long game, like a podcast. If you need money tomorrow, don't go put your energy in building out the podcast. You know, that can exactly. be a passion project that takes place over time. Or once you get a certain amount in the door, then you're going to initiate the moves that need to be made for the podcast but you've done an incredible job given um, the time that you've had where you have made so many things. Like you are an yeah. epic creator, creatrix. You should be very proud of that. Yeah. And, you know, that was one of the things. Um, so I'm really, really thrilled. You know, it took me two years to decide to pull the, pull the, pl pull, pull the go marker on the podcast, but mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you I've done 37 episodes have been released and it's been downloaded in 35 countries. Mm -hmm. And they seem so happy that I'm impacting women. I mean, I read my report and I'm like, I don't even know where Uruguay is or how to spell mm -hmm. it. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I'm in Nepal, right? And so I also, when I start a project, I say, why am I starting this project? Mm -hmm. What is my intention with this project? You know, it's mm -hmm. about setting your intentions. You know, when I wrote my first book, my intention was not to become a New York Times bestseller. My intention was to touch more people with a very, very low barrier to entry to know who I was. Mm -hmm. I, got, I did my taxes the other day and I made some royalties on my book because mm -hmm. when I go and speak, if they can't pay me, I say, mm -hmm. will you buy my book and give it to everyone in the audience? I want them to have this leave behind. And mm -hmm. I've had some success with that. And so, you know, the podcast is a long game. Um, I knew in the very beginning, I didn't want to be advertising mattresses because I knew what I didn't like about podcasts. Like, I don't want to hear you giving some cheesy ad about a mattress, right? Mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. going to get eventually get to the sponsored level, but I'm going to be really, really picky about who I affiliate with because my brand mm -hmm. matters to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, um, the podcast has, has introduced me to women all around the world that I would have never met. Mm -hmm. I've, I've formed strategic partnerships with many of them. And so that was for me, the long game. It was mm -hmm. building my community and extending my reach. That was my long game. And what I realized is all of my training in corporate communication allowed me to just use that medium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Oh I'm yeah. It's a great content it's creator. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I absolutely. love having the conversations. I love totally. You expand going. your you expand your network. You, I mean, I'm inspired every time I have a conversation. It's like, oh, there's always a gem that drops in, and yeah. you know, if if your desire is to touch lives all over the planet, which you're doing because you know you see who the countries who are tuning in, then it it the podcast is a is a great way to do it. So for everyone tuning in, if you're wondering about that it is a really smart, it's a strategy, you know, and it is, it's an investment because you pay for it. You know, no one's paying you for the podcast unless you have it behind a paywall, but your business pays for that. And then if you want to go the sponsorship route, as Tracy mentioned, that is an option. You can totally look at that. But the idea is like, why are you doing this? Who are you doing it for? What do you want to accomplish? What would you say, Tracy, that what's like the, one of the, the main things that you 
um, work on with your clients? Like what's, what are they coming to you for, for help with? So a lot of the people that come to me are what I call in transition. So they are kind of similar to me, sort of going into the third final home stretch of their life, right? So they've raised the kids, they've um, done all the things that with the career, um, and they're trying to figure out what do they want to do in retirement? What do they want to, where do they see themselves before they sort of die, basically? Mm -hmm. And so really getting introspective about where they are and where they want to go and really figuring out. So if they're at point A, where, what is their point B, right? And mm -hmm. similar to what I went through. And so, and it could be anything. It could be where they live. It could be um, they become empty nesters. It could be how many more years do they have to work? And so it's very much a transformational journey that I hold space for them to sort of figure that stuff out. And um, so I coach them on getting clear about their values, getting clear about what's important to them, what is their why, what are some of the things that maybe they never thought they could do, but now they're in a better position to do, right? And so these women come to me in what I call sort of that, what's the next phase of my life going to look like? And so they're trying to get clarity, just like I was, and I, and I help them through my private coaching and my group programs kind of transform, right? Mm -hmm. And see things a different way, adjust their mindset. And so I have, you know, different programs that I take people through, um, different workshops that I've led around leadership. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a big um, passion area of yours. Why is it so important for, for women to be in leadership? I know this is something you're taking a stand for. Why? Why is this so critical at this point in time? Well, for a variety of reasons, but I think, like you say, women have a different energy and women are much more inclusive and have higher self-awareness in my, in my view. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that the world is going to be a better place when more women are part of decision-making. Mm -hmm. um, they consider all viewpoints um, and um, women of all dimensions of diversity, whether it's sexual orientation, political party, mm -hmm. um, race, um, age, you know, all of it. Um, we just have a different lens. And I feel like um, we want the world to be a better place. You know, the Dalai Lama said the, um, the Western women are going to save the world. And I really believe that it's true. Mm -hmm. And so we have an obligation to step into that. Mm -hmm. In my view. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, that's what, that's what this show get gutsy is dedicated to It's more women saying yes to leadership and knowing yeah. that you're safe to do this, even though it can feel a bit, you know, disconcerting, like, ah, oh, because, you know, throughout history, like women have been attacked. If you go back generations and generations, like women who are really in their power, it has not been the, the easiest road. However, where we are now, I mean, the only way that we're going to you know, bring that healing to the planet that we need is more women saying, yes, I will do this. I will take that stand. I'm going to help women, you know, help people in this way. I'm going to learn more about money and do wonderful things with this money. I'm going to, um, yeah. you know, be more conscious with the way I, I consume or the way that I raise my family or the, you know, there's so many things that that leadership uh, encompasses and it's so important to, to, to really everyone tuning in right now, like go deep into your heart and say, you know, where have you been holding back? Where have you been hiding out? Where have you been waiting, like waiting, like I'm going to do it, you know, when I feel more ready, it's like, you're going to be ready when you decide. And the, that's really what yeah. Trace and I are doing for you today is saying, step forward, do this because we never know when we're going to die. Like that's the ultimate mystery. And so what are you freaking waiting for? What are you freaking waiting for? This is the opportunity. Tracy, um, I want to let everyone know too, Tracy's one of our Get Gutsy certified coaches. Uh, I have a coaching school that many of y'all know about called Get Gutsy Coach Training School. And so Tracy is, um, you know, what I love about you is you just, you're hungry. Like you're hungry, you're committed, you show up, you're grateful. You've made some, uh, one woman in particular, y'all met in one of my programs years ago, and you've continued showing up for each other. And so that, to me, is just that example of how 
not only women lead, but how women support one another and how we can say, it's like, we don't want to leave each other behind. It's like, come with me. Like, come with me. Now we can't force people, whether it be, you know, a colleague or a client. Like we always have to, one of something that came through me recently was we can't drag somebody to the start line and we can't drag them over the finish line. You know, we all have to do our part and, and to trust that we belong in the room. You know, we yeah. belong in the room. And I think some women have struggled with that. I know I did. You know, sometimes I'd be in these rooms with people. I'm like, oh, they're so much further along than me. You know, they're, they're older than me. They're this than me. They're, they know more than me. Than, and I would start kind of doubting myself and coming up with these stories around, like, they, they made a mistake. You know, <laughs> this is a fluke. <laughs> they're all going to find out that, that I'm a fraud. I'm getting kicked out of here. But what, what I'm hearing from you, Tracy, is that you know, you're taking a stand for, for women to really be the, the, the captain of that, that next chapter and the one who's, who's consciously writing it, saying, you know, yes. my life isn't over just because I'm at this kind of, you know, maybe the third act. It's like, I mean, you could make a massive change today if you decided yes. to do that. But to your point, don't do it alone because it, it's just it's already challenging, but when you're trying to do it by yourself, it's just going to be, it's going to feel impossible. It's just going to feel impossible. And we don't have time for that crap. Tracy, what is the gutsiest move you have ever made? I can't wait to hear what you have to say here. And how does it inspire your life and work today? So I'm going to go way back, but Somebody asked me this question at one of my talks because I basically was telling this audience of like 100 women, I said, you know, I give you permission to be brave. And I was telling them about my podcast and the, and the finale question I always ask is, you know, what's kind of the bravest thing that you've ever done? And, I, and I'm just so honored and humbled when people tell me their stories. But for me, I have to say it was when I was 19 years old. And my parents were going through a really, really nasty divorce. And um, I was just drinking too much and not really, you know, stuffing all my feelings down. And I was just in a really, really bad place. And I decided that I was going to study abroad. And I was going to go to the University of London. And so I got in and I worked all summer long. I made a whopping $800. And mm -hmm. I decided that I was going to fly from Baltimore to New York, New York to London, and I was going to live in London for six months um, because I just needed to escape. And that was going to be my escape. And mm -hmm. I thought that I was being so smart by escaping mm -hmm. to a foreign country where mm -hmm. I knew no one, and I had $800. And I was, that was going to last me for six months. 800 bucks is going to last you for six months. Okay. Isn't it great to be young and uh, yeah. keep talking? Yeah. I'm going to let my dog in because she's at my door. She's like, I want to be part of this conversation. Okay. So you're like 800 bucks. No problem. That seemed like a lot when you're young. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. I thought I, I was so rich. I could I retire. Was, like, <laughs> I thought I was so rich. And my, I asked my grandparents if they would buy me my plane ticket because I didn't even have enough money to buy the plane ticket. And I bought a one-way ticket. And I went and I spent like $20 on a army duffel bag and I threw what I thought was going to be enough for six months into this duffel bag. Mm -hmm. And I hopped on a plane and I went to London and I went to school and, you know, my $800, I think lasted like two weeks or some crazy thing. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I called my grandparents and I was like, uh, I'm over here in London and thanks for the one way ticket, but like, I have no money. And so my grandparents were like, don't worry about it. Cause at that point, my parents were like a hot mess. Right. And my sister was away at college. So she didn't have any money. I was rich compared to her. Mm -hmm. And um, so, but I knew, I knew that I, that the world was a bigger place. I had grown up in a really small town and I just, I just knew I had, and I went to a really small private that was very insular and everybody else was very alike. And um, mm -hmm. so I was like, I got to do something different. I got to bust out and do something different. And so that's what I did. And you know what? It changed the trajectory of my life. Mm -hmm. It made me want to work globally. It mm -hmm. taught me so much about other cultures, even though they speak English, it's a totally different culture. 
Right. I met people from all around the world. My teachers were freaking amazing. Um, they were from Oxford and Cambridge and, you know, like we would study architecture and actually go to the churches and cathedrals and the art museums. And they were like the expert in, you know, that type of thing. And I just, for me, intellectually, it was so stimulating. Um, you know, and I came back a changed person. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. You know, that's and, it. Uh, it's that willingness to, to be the only one. Like I'm the only yeah. one who's going, I'm going to do this by myself. It logically is kind of nuts because I don't have that much money. How am I going to figure it out? My parents are going through this crazy divorce. Like I'm on my own. Yeah. Did it. And it changed your whole awareness because you're just around. Like that's the beauty of travel. When you're around different yeah. people. You're like, Oh my gosh, there's a whole world out there. And I've just been seeing a little sliver. Right. And part of the program was amazing because we only had school from noon on Monday until noon on Thursday. And so we were allowed to travel um, from Thursday afternoon until Monday morning. And so I would cobble together whatever money I could get. I bought a Brit Rail Pass. I went all over England, Scotland, Wales, Spain. And, you know, I, I ate a lot of apples and drank a lot of Diet Coke. Let me just put it that way. That was my diet. Figure it out. You figure it out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No but, but yeah, that was probably the gutsiest thing I've ever done. Love that. Go girl. I love that. I love that. And I love asking that question because I mean, yeah, the responses are so cool. They're so diverse and, and it's fun to go back and remember that and like, yeah, I did that, you know, because then we, we want to pull some of that forward with us to go, I can, I can do this other thing that I'm, you know, I'm at the precipice of this decision going, this is really not that big of a deal. Look what I did then. That was, that was huge. And I think when we're younger, we have kind of less, feel like less on the line. Like uh, just me, like, I, you know, I don't really have a lot of responsibilities, but, but Hey, we're still that person. We're still that person. We can still bring that forward with us. Tracy, where can people find you? Yeah, so I like to hang out on Instagram at Tracy M. And I also have a website where I post all my content and it's just TracyM.com. Mm -hmm. um, I am on Facebook as Tracy M and I'm on LinkedIn. So I would love to connect. My, um, my podcast is called Brave Girls with Tracy M and I'm on all the channels, you know. So you can just put Tracy M in or Brave Girls and I'll come up. And I post my episodes, I try to do every Monday, because I know one of the things I like about podcasts is when they're on the regular. And mm -hmm. I know that I can count on them. If you if you flake out, and you're not posting, then I then I unsubscribe because I feel like <laughs> you're not you're not there for me. Yeah, you're not there for my listeners. Um, and, you know, I've got a couple books on Amazon, you can just put my name in They're They're affordable. I have Kindle editions that are like sometimes free. Two dollars. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got another book in me, and I'm doing on that right now. But you know, I just I love being around women and empowering women, and being mm -hmm. other around other inspirational women. And so, um, yeah, I just follow me on Instagram. It's it's who I really am. I show like everything where I am, yeah. what I'm eating, who I'm Instagram with. Instagram is fun. It is fun. fun. I like that channel um, too. And we'll sync everything up on our show notes page. So y'all can go to jennyfennick.com, click on the, the blog and podcast tab, and then just put Tracy M in the search bar. And this episode will come up. And it has been awesome to have you here, Tracy. Again, we've known each other for a long time. And shout out to Angelie Grewers and Allie Brown for being the ones yeah. to help us, help us connect. And, and you know, there are there's certain people that you're just, you're meant to, to do a lot of deep work with. So I thank you, Tracy, for uh, investing in yourself through so many of my creations and, and continuing to show up for the work and for the community. Um, Tracy is one of our coaches in my program, Magic Makers. We do these, you know, we have seasonal coaches who will come in and support the community. And, uh, you know, I really just think it's so special when, when we have women who will show up for each other. And to really model what it is to be a stand-up leader. And that is who you are, Tracy. So everybody, thanks so much for tuning in today. Thanks to, for Tracy for sharing her brilliance and continuing to do brave things. This is Jenny Fenix sending you so much love, magic, and confidence as you get gutsy. I will see you next time.